Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Monitoring of Circulating CAR T cells. I'm Cassie Soltman of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Milton e Biotech. To learn more, visit MiltonEBiotech.com. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Submit. Our speakers will answer questions via email to the address you provided during registration. You may also submit any technical issues here as well if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. I'd like to now welcome our speakers, Dr. Annika Grabond, expert for flow cytometry reagents, Milton e Biotech, Dr. Sabine Hunica, Head of Laboratory, Stem Cell Transplantation and Immunotherapy at University Hospital Frankfurt, and Dr. Melanie Brem, Deputy Head of Laboratory, Stem Cell Transplantation and Immunotherapy at University Hospital Frankfurt. Speakers, you may now begin your presentations. A warm welcome also from my side. Today, we are taking a closer look at different strategies for CAR detection in regard to the follow-up of patients undergoing CAR T-cell treatment. Flow cytometry is a powerful tool to monitor CAR T-cells and blood samples over time. It can tell you whether your marker of interest is expressed at the protein level, and it can give insight into protein functionality. Moreover, it enables you to track multiple markers on a single cell level, for example, for analysis of cell subtype representation. By monitoring circulating CAR T cells, the success of the therapy can be tracked. You might want to look whether CAR T expansion is taking place at around one to two weeks after infusion, and if some CAR T cells persist over longer periods of time. Additionally, you might also want to analyze CAR T cell differentiation, exhaustion, proliferation, or activation. For such clinical flow cytometry assays, a reliable and high-performing CAR detection reagent is essential. You need a reagent that performs consistently from lot to lot, that is reliable and works with different CAR constructs, that is sensitive enough to detect small number of CAR T-cells in blood samples from different donors, that is specific and only gives you true positive events, that is accurate and gives you meaningful results in samples with different amounts of CAR T cells and in comparison with other reference methods, and you need a reagent that gives you reproducible results independent of the operator or location. To boost the reliability of our CAR detection reagents at Milton e Biotech, we have designed them with the benefits of our unique reaffinity recombinant antibody technology. With the reaffinity technology, we are in control of the genomic information behind our antibodies, and we can select for the best performing clones and produce them with high purity, ensuring lot-to-lot -lot consistency. The universal IgG1 isotype reduces complexity of experiment planning, and the engineered special FC backbone eliminates nonspecific background staining. There are different suitable strategies for CAR detection, for example, antigen-based or antibody-based idiotypic CAR detection. As you can see, the principle of antigen-based CAR detection is very similar to in vivo tumor recognition. Our antigen-based CAR detection reagents consist of the CAR target protein, for example, CD19, fused with a biotin-labeled mutated FC backbone eliminating background signal. The target protein is bound by the CAR receptor and can be readily identified using fluorochrome labeled biotin antibodies. This approach multiplies the signal and increases assay sensitivity compared to fluorochrome labeled proteins. The features of antigen based CAR detection reagents are a broad specificity and they are highly sensitive. Antibody based CAR detection reagents are typical reaffinity recombinant antibodies. CAR receptor specificity is typically derived from the single-chain variable fragment, the SCFV region of a monoclonal antibody, for example, CD19-specific mouse monoclonal antibody FMC63. Ideotype antibodies recognize the SCFV of a specific CAR receptor, meaning the variable part which includes the antigen binding domain. Both biotin and fluorochrome-labeled ideotype antibodies can be used for sensitive CAR detection. 
The features of ideal type car detection reagents are a narrow specificity and one step staining as possible. We have the right solutions for antigen based car detection of CD19, BCMA, CD22, and CD33 car detection by flow cytometry. We also have the um, ideal type antibody to detect FMC63 derived CD19 car by flow cytometry. And this reagent is also compatible with imaging applications and CYTOF or CYTSEQ. In this experiment, a blood sample from a healthy donor containing no CAR T cells was analyzed, either without BCMA CAR detection reagent, with the Miltony Biotech BCMA CAR detection reagent, or two similar products from other vendors. And as you can see, due to the reaffinity recombinant technology, Miltony Biotech car detection reagents have an outstanding specificity and have significant lower background staining on negative specimens compared to other vendors. This makes them the ideal tool for IPCQC during cell manufacturing and follow up in patients. The car detection reagents are compatible with different cell types. They allow reliable distinction of car expressing and negative cells on both CAR T and CAR and K cells, as shown here. And with that, I would like to hand over to Dr. Sabine Hünnecke and Dr. Melanie Brem. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Sabine Hünnecke, and I would like to present our data how to monitor patients who received CAR T cells. Up to now, we treated more than 40 pediatric patients who suffered from acute lymphoblastic leukemia. The majority of patients were relapsed after allogenic stem cell transplantation and the smaller proportion were refractory acute lymphoplastic leukemia patients without prior stem cell transplantation. We monitor mainly patients who received Comwire from Novartis and the main focus on this presentation lies on the methodology of flow cytometry. But of course, in the validation phase, we were interested in controlling our results with PCR. And so two labs were involved here, the laboratory of stem cell transplantation, where we are responsible for, and the laboratory of minimal residual disease and chimerism, which is managed by Dr. Hermann Kreinberg here in Frankfurt. I would like to point out two people in particular, Andreas Peinelt and Lara Schlesing, both of whom are currently writing their doctoral thesis on the topic at our clinical institute. They have contributed significantly to the establishment of CAR T-cell monitoring. Andreas put his major force into the validation and Lara focused her attention on the comparison of the different detection antibodies and the interlaboratory comparison with Sweden. So there are two possibilities to monitor CAR T-cell expansion in vivo by flow cytometry or and by PCR. With flow cytometry, the measurement will take two to three hours. The detection limit refers to approximately 0.5 cells per microliter. And one benefit is the quite fast result, whereas the PCR will take a bit longer with the main advantage of the little lower detection limit. This presentation will cover two topics. First, I will explain the validation of our flow cytomatic assay, which we used to monitor CAR T cells after immunotherapy. These data have been published by us in Frontiers in Immunology. And in the second part, I will show our results from the comparative measurements on patient samples in cooperation with the Karolinska Institute in Sweden. So I will start with the establishment of the monitoring method. As part of the validation of the quasi-quantitative assay, we took a closer look at the following aspects. Sensitivity. Here we calculated the limit of blank, the limit of detection, and the lower limit of quantification, and showed linearity by serial dilution. Precision was analyzed via intra- and inter-assay imposition, as well as imposition analysis between instruments. Stability is a very important parameter for clinical routine, as patient samples frequently arrive at the laboratory with delay if they are sent from external clinics. So we determined the sample stability by repetitive measurements 
of the same samples on five consecutive days. Accuracy was shown in comparison with PCR and specificity on selectivity was shown by the measurement of negative controls who did not receive CAR T cells. In the following I will describe the results in more detail. So I will start here with the sensitivity. We used negative controls and near blank dilutions to calculate the limit of blank and the limit of detection on our 10 color Navios flow cytometer from Beckman Coulter. Results from three independent experiments suggest precise and linear quantification of the CAR T cell fraction down to 0.01%. Nevertheless, it is important to note that the detection limit depends to some extent on the absolute number of T cells and might be critical in post lymphodepletion samples. We next evaluated the precision of our assay at different levels across the detection range. A high positive with about 1300 CAR positive events, an intermediate positive with about 580 CAR positive events, and a low positive with about 60 CAR positive events. Samples were selected and three different precision parameters were assessed for each of them. Intra-assay imposition corresponding to subsequent measurements of the same sample. Inter-assay precision means the measurement of samples in multiple. And inter-instrument refer to comparison measurements on a navius and a second flow cytometer. Here we used the DXFlex flow cytometer from Beckman Coulter. The imposition ranged between 0% and 16.8% coefficient of variation showing a high measurement position across the detection range. 46 CAR T-cell monitoring samples were independently assessed for accuracy analysis with flow cytometry and real-time PCR. Here you see a clear correlation as shown by Spearman's correlation coefficient. The higher the CAR T-cell quantity, the smaller the spread. In the area of the detection limit, the scattering becomes wider. We see differences between the method due to the reporting in different units and, of course, due to possible multiple vector integrations per genome. But in summary, we observed a clear correlation and comparability. To assess the impact of measurement delays on cell viability and the reported percentage of CAR T cells, we repeated testing of seven patient samples on five consecutive days. While initial leukocyte viability was very high and expectedly declined slowly over time, the relative percent difference of the median CAR T cell value declined stringently early and exceeded our acceptability criterion of 20% difference even on the first day after sample collection. When determining the stability, we had rather expected an increase due to non-specific binding and were quite surprised that this was not the case. And yet it is quite a reduction in CAR T cells when working with mailed-in samples. Normally, our acceptance criteria is much tougher. For accreditation reasons, we would not measure a blood sample older than 48 hours. After 24 hours, we no longer use activation markers in our laboratory because we know that this is strongly influenced by the age of the sample. In evaluating these results, it must be said that the CAR T cells in the peak strongly gave the impression of being really exhausted. We have analyzed other markers as well. However, I will not go into that in detail of exhaustion here now. In addition, we took morphological images and here too it was confirmed that the CAR T cells appeared exhausted and apoptotic, especially in the expansion phase, more so than in comparison with the other immune cells that are regularly measured. However, the, the general tendency of the curse was not affected and no false positive occurred. So we think that with appropriate caution, analysis of older samples is still possible. On the following slide, I would like to show you some exciting evaluation and examples of our pediatric patient cohort. First, the curse of CAR T cell regeneration in 24 patients is shown here. 
Almost all patients show a peak of CAR T cells after about two to three weeks after infusion. After that, the CAR T cells settle at a low level. So you can ask why monitoring CAR T cells so closely? There are publications who showed that a high expansion of CAR T cells is correlated with a better outcome in these patients. And of course, a longer persistence speaks for controlling the blasts over a longer period of time. And one major advantage of monitoring by flow cytometry is that you can differentiate the cells in more detail. And so I come to the next to my next slide. Here is a patient example where we saw a very high increase in CAR T cells within a short period of time, as you can see here on day 12. You see a tremendous uh, CAR T cell peak. CAR T cell monitoring curves match well with common models of CAR T cell cellular kinetics as shown on the bottom right. CAR T cell cellular kinetics can be broken up into an initial period of exponential growth, the so-called expansion phase, a period of rapidly falling CAR T cell numbers, the contraction phase, and a gradual decline over months or years, the so-called persistence of CAR T cells. So now we'll go a little into detail with CAR T cell subpopulation phenotyping. This figure shows the subset of cytotoxic and T helper cells relative to all T cells, picture top white, and CAR T cells bottom, bottom white. Here we determined a more balanced ratio among the CAR T cells, but when looking at the T4 CAR T cell compartment, there is a huge range from 0 up to 90% proportion. Whereas in the T8, on the cytotoxic CAR T cell compartment, the picture is more balanced and very comparable to the normal cytotoxic T cells. The reason for this is clearly that in this cohort we also had patients who relapsed shortly after allogenic stem cell transplantation. And it is known that the T4 compartment is the compartment with the longest recovery time. It takes from one to two years after stem cell transplantation until normal T helper cell counts can be found in the patient's blood. And this is reflected here. Furthermore, we analyzed the subset of naive effector and central memory cells relative to CAR T cells. And as you can see nicely that the largest proportion are effector memory with a median proportion of 65% and the second largest are the central memory CAR T cells with 27%. However, I have to add here that in this group of patient evaluation, there are mainly patients who underwent allogenic stem cell transplantation before CAR T cell administration. So the naive T cell pool is very limited due to the regeneration of T cells, especially shortly after stem cell transplantation. And this picture would be fundamentally different if we were looking at patients without allogenic uh, stem cell transplantation. Most of the, of the samples we analyzed were taken at peak approximately two to three weeks after CAR T cell infusion, because often only at the time sufficient CAR T cells were detectable to also analyze the subgroups. In two patients, however, sufficient CAR T cells were still detectable over a long period of time, and we were able to detect CAR T cells of a naive phenotype. And here in this example, you see a flow cytomatic analysis four years after CAR T cell administration showing 33% naive CAR T cells. So our hypothesis is that formation of naive CAR T cells maybe offers the possibility of long persisting CAR T cells. Now I will move on to the second part of the presentation. For stem cells, T cells, and many other immune cells in Germany and Austria, Instant EV offered a wide range of external quality controls, so-called EQAs, in the area of hematology and immunology. Since no interlaboratory comparison are officially offered for the analysis of CAR T cells, we performed comparative measurements with the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm. 
All patients from whom we received samples were treated with Yaskata, and in total we performed seven comparative measurements of three patients. The original antibody for Miltony and the new FMC63 antibody were used. We in Frankfurt performed additional comparison with 100 microliter and 200 microliter blood as starting volume. Since we saw a decrease in CAR T cells with time delayed measurement and stability analysis as shown previously, the measurement was synchronized in time with our colleagues from Sweden. So first I would like to show an example of each patient and the FMC63 EDU type shows the more optimal separation index. Look at the bar length here in red. When increasing the amount of blood applied, the cluster can be significantly optimized, symbolized with the help of the blue cycles. This is particularly important for the detection limit. At lower cell counts, we suggest to work with 200 microliter of whole blood due to the higher number of events recorded by the flow cytometer. To illustrate the improved separation index, here again is a one-dimensional plot of the mean fluorescence intensity, or short, short called MFI, shown using a histogram and an overlay plot. For those who are not familiar with flow cytometry, the CAR negative cells are shown in red, the indirect staining with the add of biotin PE in gray, and the FMC63 is shown in light and dark blue. The FMC63 EDU type shows the best separation index, however, with the regional stain, positive and negative fractions can also be separated very well. When you have a very low CAR T cell expression density present, this may be due to patient variability or samples that are just peaking and showing strong signs of exhaustion, the more the advantage of the better separation index of FMC63 takes hold. You might remember the slide 10 where I show you the CAR T cell kinetics with a very strong increase in, in, the, in the CAR T cell peak. In Blend Altman statistics, the results of original stain and FMC63 antibody, as well as the usage of 100 and 200 microliter blood as starting volume, are plotted. The results are very comparable and show only differences of smaller or equal 2% in the comparison of the original stain versus the direct labeling with FMC63. In the comparison of the different starting blood volume, the difference is even equal and less than 1% for the FMC63. And of course, with regard to working time, it must also be emphasized that the preparation procedure with direct labeling of FMC63 is also greatly reduced from two hours to just under half an hour. And the fewer washing steps also reduce cell losses, which is important when measuring in the area of the detection limit. The main challenge in establishment new diagnostic assays is that no external quality assessments or so-called EQAs are offered yet, and there is no control material for CAR T cells available. Control material should be available in various concentrations for counting CAR T cells by flow cytometry, for example, for stem cell determination, this is a whole blood control that does not require dilution and provides reference values similar to those found in humans. However, in order to de determine accuracy in the CAR T cell detection, we performed a method comparison in the validation phase, and now we performed an interlaboratory comparison with the Karolinska Institute in Sweden. In total, we showed highly comparable results with more than 90% agreement. As you can see on the right graph, the better separation index with the new EDU type gives almost the same value. To summarize, I have presented two topics. First, the establishment and validation of an assay for CAR T cell measurement by flow cytometry. And we could show a high precision and linearity down to 0.01% and that additional parameters could be measured like the cytotoxic and the helper CAR T cells and also their differentiation into naive effector memory and so on. 
Furthermore, I showed you the results of our laboratory, interlaboratory comparison with Karolinska Institute, showing an, a very high comparability between the measurement results and a higher stain index for FMC 63, but also excellent separation with the original stain. So, and finally, I would like to thank and all colleagues in Frankfurt and in Stockholm as well for the good cooperation and, of course, for you and your attention. Thank you. Thank you again, Drs. Grabond, Puneka and Brem for your time today and your important research. We would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Milton e Biotech, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today. Questions submitted today and during the on-demand period will be addressed by our speakers via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, take care everyone. Goodbye.